Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to get Lightroom organized. I want to show you a little bit about the way you can set it up. For example, right now, we are particularly in the library module. These are different modules, uh, library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print, web. And when you're in these, you can customize your view using these uh, little arrows. And they pop those sidebars and and all these other little sections in and out you can also uh, hit the tab key and that's going to take the ones on the side off and shift tab is going to do all of them so there's a couple other things you can do you can tap the L key whenever you're looking in any situation and it is going to dim the rest of your screen you hit it again it's going to go fully black so that's pretty cool. So the L key, remember to do that. You also have you also have the ability to uh, select multiple images at once. Okay, and when you're selecting multiple images, you want to use, for example, select the first one by clicking on its frame, and then go down to another one and hold down Shift and click on its frame and what you can see here is that one of them is brighter and what will happen is uh, there's two levels of selections you see when you click on a picture right you're then seeing its details over here and changes you apply will apply to that one if you have uh, several selected with it they'll apply to that as well let's jump over to the develop panel so I can show you what I'm talking about if I were to just tap black and white, um, you'll see how it's changed that one. And these other ones did not change. And that was because I didn't have the uh, middle of that picture selected. I'm going to go ahead and reset that by clicking the reset button. I'm going to jump back to my library. You can also use uh, control clicks. Control clicks will also uh, select multiple ones. If you control click, um, you can control click differently um, when you want to select or deselect ones not in a row. Um, and there's some other uh, neat things you can do as far as uh, viewing different groups. If you look on your left, you have the navigator, which is going to show um, the currently bright selected picture and below you have your catalog which will show you all the photographs the quick collection and previous imports so our last import was our main import so we have all of our numbers are the same but if you just brought in a uh, SD card it would show up here and you know those 15 20 photos whatever you imported would show up there so you can uh, jump to those different ones in the catalog you can also go to your um, folders and inside the folder this is where we're basically going to be navigating most of the time you can jump to folders and then you just see those documents in that folder um, so we're going to be using mainly the folder method and showing the navigator uh, if you are having trouble seeing remember you can always collapse one of these so that they don't show up as big um, any drive that's um, online will have a green icon. If it's not online, it won't be green here. This means that my external drive that has my uh, working files are online. It is here ready to work. And when you click on one, you'll see over here underneath the histogram that the original photo is there. Now, if you wanted to say work on one of these photos without your external drive and you wanted to like go on vacation and work on one for example you can tell it to build a smart preview from this button and when you click on that it'll build a smart preview it says smart previews are typically smaller than original photos uh, but they allow you to continue working even when the originals are missing uh, and you build up smart previews um, you can do them one at a time you can do them in groups so anyway I wanted to tell you about that 
Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the views here. Uh, while we're in the library panel, you can uh, change some of the views. There is uh, this view here, which is loop view. All right, and you can uh, tap E on the keyboard to hit that. And then you see that one individual picture. And if you were to cycle through to another picture, you see you can go down to the bottom and see those other pictures. Um, the neat thing about uh, Lightroom is that it doesn't ever make any changes to any of the pictures themselves. It merely saves a set of instructions for the computer to use when viewing those pictures. So if I were to work on this picture and change it, it doesn't actually change the original file. And that goes for all the files, uh, JPEGs, PSDs, whatever. And so it's very useful to adjust your pictures here because you're always going to be in a non-destructive edit. It's also going to always allow you to go back in time and go back to the original. So what I want you to do is uh, jump through to a couple of these things. I want you to see as uh, grid view it takes you back. Um, you have compare view and that's going to show uh, ones that are um, up and running. Let's see here. And let's compare these two. See, they're, they're very close. If you were to switch out of these, you can jump. And now I'm seeing the candidate on the other side. So these are just ways to help narrow down what you are thinking. If you click this swap button, it's going to swap between the selection and the candidate. So this is how you can narrow down pictures. So let's do that for a second. Let's just go through a little... Um, narrowing down feature okay uh, let's let's make these two come up and so we have a selection in the candidate and right now I think I like I think I like the I'll say the one on the right and what we can do is swap the candidate to the selection so now it's over there and then the next one will pull in we can then adjust those and determine which ones are the best if you are basically fiddling through these things you can make the selection you see how this makes the candidate into the selection and then you can pick another picture to mess with or to choose and so in this case I think I'm gonna go ahead and make this one the selection and I think the selection is the one I'm gonna choose now uh, once you get something narrowed down like that, you can put on a pick flag. So it says flag as pick, which means that's the one I'm going to use. So I click that, and now this one has a flag. If I return to the view here, you'll see that I have a flag up in the corner. And so that means that one is flagged as the one I'm going to choose. So it's very good to narrow down ideas here. Uh, you can change um, some other settings here. I want you to see that you can change the sort from the capture time to the rating. And so uh, if you have ratings involved, those are these little stars. You can um, star a photo. You see how that jump that to the front. All right. Uh, you can um, add some other data over here. If I... Um, turn off the quick develop here and bring down keywording right now all of these have the keyword of Kansas 2013 um, it says that there's a star so that means it doesn't have all of them so if I wanted to get all of them to have that Kansas 2013 I'll hold down shift after I click the first one and then we can make sure we have Kansas 2013 and now they all have that Kansas 2013 keyword and all of them are set for that so there's a way you can add keywords over here on the right you can also have sets of keywords right here and you can also have keyword lists where you can have oops I collapse that we'll bring that back out and 
you can have a whole bunch of different keywords. You can just check them. Okay, so these ones here we might consider. I might consider them stock photography for use in um, other applications. And so, you know, you're going to see all your keywords and metadata there. You also see information about how the camera was uh, taken, like uh, what type of camera it was. The DMC G3. The flash did not fire. What the ISO was. So you got a lot of settings over here on the right that you're going to see uh, about your pictures. And so what I'd like you to do is just familiar yourself with, familiarize yourself with these. Um, if you um, jump through some of these filters, you can see um, different attributes to determine, hey, where's all my flagged ones? Where's all my, and I click the flag one, see I only have one flag, so it shows me all my flags. So you can organize in here. And what I want you to do is play around with that and see what you can come up with.